ChiefDateWine.com, Robert Fitzmores O'Maurin, your uh, sommelier and chef at large. Um, Happy New Year. This is going to be our last uh, review uh, for the year, for 2020. Um, and rightfully so, we're going to do it with my favorite uh, value-priced uh, sparkling wine of the year. Um, this is going to be a Vouve de Vernay, a Vive, if you want to pronounce it annoyingly correctly. Vive uh, du Vernay, Brut, non-vintage, France, uh, somewhere between 8 bucks, 11 bucks, depending on where you're shopping. Um, this takes advantage of the uh, very value-oriented Charmat uh, process that's making sparkling wine in a large tank to uh, reduce the overall cost of it. And um, this produ particular producer is in Bordeaux. I think that they, um, they definitely do a good quality job of the grapes that go in. Um, more emphasis on maybe the quality of the grapes and not so much emphasis on uh, the racking and riddling of the uh, method champenoise, which is the traditional champagne method, which is where you make the bubbles inside of each individual bottle while it undergoes a, second, a secondary fermentation in bottle. It's a little complicated, but anyway, uh, more expensive uh, champagne style wines or method champenoise, those are fermented in bottle for the second fermentation. This is made in a tank for the second. That saves you a lot of money uh, here at CheapDateWine.com. We want you to enjoy a luxurious lifestyle every day on a everybody budget. If you are um, trying to accumulate wealth, if you are trying to live your life to the fullest, um, and, or if you're on a fixed income, um, everybody deserves uh, the greatest luxuries on life, which for me are wine and cheese and preserves and, and uh, dates, even if it's a date, of, date with yourself um, at the end of the day after work or at night. Um, so um, this, for me, this is comparable to a um, much more expensive 17 to $25 French uh, sparkling uh, Cremant uh, de Loire or Cremant de Bourgogne. Those are sparkling wines from uh, the Loire Valley in France or Burgundy um, in France that are made in the, the method champagne, uh, champagne method, method champagne was, um, or maybe a 18, 17 to $22 Napa Brut. Let's say maybe a like a mum um, a Napa Cuvée, something along those lines. Uh, the style is very classic, but it's got kind of a, a balance between crisp, dry, or dryness and kind of ripe lemon fruit and cream so definitely not sweet and definitely I wouldn't even say it, it's fruity but it's just enough fruit that it balances out that dryness that sometimes is harder on some people when they're drinking sparkling wine a pretty good crowd pleaser um, the uh, character overall I'd say it's kind of that golden child with the the bowl cut you know blonde hair and the blue eyes are kind of innocent but um, kind of driven um, kind of a, a per personality, you might say. Um, mass appeal, 95% easily. Um, sparkling wine drinkers can enjoy this wine. A few champagne drinkers may feel it's a little too fruity, fruity or, you know, and then it also, it won't be sweet enough for like somebody likes Moscato, you know, Moscato de Asti or something like that, or Moscato that wants, you know, basically something really sweet. So um, this is gonna be like champagne, but just a touch fruitier. My quality to price ratio, I'm sitting at a 90 to 91 points. This might be the most enjoyable, value-oriented sparkling wine that I've had this year by far. Um, production story of a 19th century French scientist named uh, Jean-Eugène Charmant, who also invented the Charmant tank process. Uh, he fell in love with a widow in the, the town of Vernay, France, and the, the widow helped him start his business. So... Um, in honor of that, um, this wine was created called uh, Vouve du Vernay. Vouve means widow, so widow of Vernay, in kind of memory of the sort of a love story that took place in France. The region, the, the winery is in western France. Um, it's in Bordeaux, and um, it's not necessarily Bordeaux grapes. You know, we don't quite know exactly where the grapes are coming from from this. I do know that there's some Sauvignon Blanc in it. Um, there may be some Simeon in, in um, Uni Blanc, uh, which is used to make cognac and Armagnac um, uh, spirits. Um, the aromas, you know, I definitely get some very light yellow citrus. I maybe get a little bit of breadiness, maybe a little bit of cakiness. Um, that's a word, cake. <laughs> 
you know, like a yellow cake. Um, flavors, yellow peel, uh, lemon for sure. Um, baguette, you know, a nice clean white um, baguette. Um, pineapple cake for sure. Kind of this kind of wet kind of uh, pineapple rum cake. Um, cream a little bit. Um, tangerine. Uh, maybe even maybe even a little touch of um, a nuttiness like pecan or something a little richer like that um, hazelnut uh, body is maybe two out of five in weightiness uh, the fruit maybe maybe two out of five as well just a, a tad of fruit um, acidity um, I'd say two out of five. You know, there's acidity here, but it's not so much that it's going to bother some people. But it's enough that um, that I think that uh, champagne drinkers are going to still be able to enjoy it. A toasty nuttiness. There's maybe like a, about two out of five. The kind of toasty nutty notes. Um, earthy, yeasty. Um, I mean, maybe a little bread yeast at most, but not much. And sugar, maybe one out of five, if not zero out of five. No real perceivable sugar. Again, just that fruitiness. I'll call it a one out of five just for uh, being easy to read later um, or just to be easy to read later. Um, cheeses. Um, I'm definitely going to jump into that Swiss Alpine um, family. Um, that's going to be your, um, your comp, you know, your... Um, Uh, some of your Swiss uh, cheeses, things like that. I've been kind of on a Basque uh, goat cheese kick lately, so I'm kind of kind of filling that with this wine too. And um, uh, definitely a nice lemony chev. It's easy peasy. Uh, food that this could work with, definitely anything poultry. Seafood easily. This is wine you can do with or without food. Hurries. This is a great party wine um, or entertaining wine for a lot of people. Uh, vegetables. Uh, definitely can work with a lot of difficult green vegetables, that's for sure. Um, your asparagus and your green beans. This will probably tread through, no problem at all. So, anyway, this has uh, been your sommelier at large, Robert Fitzmaurice so O'Malley. Wishing you a very happy two, 2021 year and a happy uh, finish to this 2020 year. I think it's been very conducive um, to forming a lot of my ideas about very value-driven uh, wine and, and value-driven luxury that you can enjoy every day. We never know what the market's going to do and where things are going to go. So um, that being said... Um, Make every night date night, and cheers to you. A happy 2020. More importantly, happy 2021. <laughs>